folks. This is Jacob filling in for Tom O'Brien. He will be back tomorrow. Uh, today we're seeing a little bit of a uh, bounce back on the major indices. We have the Dow up a bit. Uh, NASDAQ still down a little. Um, S&P 500 up a little bit. SPY. The dollar has made quite a move up. Now we broke that 102 level and uh, we'll see if we can stick up there from the 101. I, uh, last Friday we were just kicking over the 101. So it seems like the dollar is rallying a bit. Obviously, gold is taking a step back quite a bit. Um, and then we have the ES Mini up just a bit. It's a nice green line right there for you all. So what is going on this week? We have a lot of earnings. Um, obviously, Schwab knocked it out of the park. Let's see if we can get Schwab up for a... Ah, it's top one. So... With Schwab, uh, the adjusted earnings left about 20% to $0.93 cents per share, um, while revenue rose 10%. A lot of this is being driven by uh, higher returns on loans. Uh, net interest income spiked 26% to $2.77 billion. Uh, trading revenue declined 7% to $892 million. Uh, bank deposits tumbled 30%. I think we all <clears throat> kind of expected that. Um, and that was down to $325.7 million. And total assets fell 21% to 535 million. And uh, Schwab also decided to pause its share buyback program uh, in light of the recent banking events. Um, so th that was a nice bump up. Um, we also had, let's see here, M&T. They popped up similarly um, due to the same kind of reasons, right? The higher interest rates um, are just returning a lot back on their lending. Now, if we're looking at um, let's see here. State Street is a custodian bank. So they're holding on to these kind of just assets in general, um, and they manage them. Uh, th this fell pretty grossly. Um, I mean, they're down 10% today on the earnings. Generally speaking, though, it seems like the banks are poised uh, for, some, for some nice bump up, I would suppose. I think Bank of America, we're going to see something similar. Um, what they're talking about, um, at least the market views this as well. Obviously, you had some big volume on the downside, um, but you're getting a nice increase back up. Some high volume earlier today, about 1.30 p.m. Um, and they're saying they their forecasts are pretty solid as well. Now, I want to take a look at this here. This is um, from Morgan Stanley. And of course, we're going to increase this a little bit. Oh, man. So this is the S&P 500 sector returns. Uh, you see financials have a real high increase, at least on the one week, right? They're very heavily weighted. So this is all your banks. Uh, energy as well. We know that. Uh, industrials, materials. Um, consumer staples obviously going down. Interesting. Technology. Definitely like in fintech as well. Um, this is seeing a huge hit. Utilities. And, of course, we know real estate. Um, it's pretty interesting. We can, I'll read through a little bit what Morgan Stanley had to say um, is this is throughout the week in the first quarter. Earnings seasons is underway with the large U.S. banks releasing results last Friday. And obviously we have some still coming up. Uh, current analyst estimates are tracking operating earnings per share. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, operating EPS of 49.54, uh, representing year-over-year -year growth of 0.4% and a quarter-over-quarter -quarter decline of 1.6%. Uh, at the sector level, these estimates suggest a change in leadership. Uh, the boost from the energy sector looks to set to fade due to normalizing commodity prices. And that's a huge thing to keep in mind as well. Even with the decrease of oil production with OPEC, you know, this is kind of might be meeting a um, strict up in demand on the larger kind of global scale on it. Um, so the current estimate of 7.6% uh, year-over-year earnings growth uh, for energy sector represents a sharp deceleration compared to recent quarters. So kind of act accordingly regarding that. Other things we have to look forward to tomorrow um, Goldman Sachs, let's take a look here. Probably see something similar uh, with the other, we got them right here, up modestly today. Um, and then Lockheed Martin, which will be interesting. I, I am eternally interested to see how these defense stocks operate, especially in this world. Um, I personally think that everything's essentially priced in, um, even dealing with uh, uh, the Ukraine war. Uh, but we'll see how they report. Um, and then Netflix. 
Um, and everyone online, you know, take for that what it is, seems to be really interested in Netflix. And we'll, we might see like a bump up on that. I'll be watching it. I'm not going to take any position, honestly. I think these prices are huge. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens and, and how that returns. Also, we have Tesla. Um, that's going to be Wednesday. What's interesting about Tesla, too, is um, Elon via SpaceX is uh, having a rocket launch right before earnings. And obviously, SpaceX and Tesla are not um, integrated business-wise. But I think what's important to keep in mind on the broader scale is, is it seems like the, the kind of hotshot meme investors do see them as, as integrated. So whenever SpaceX does super well, Tesla roars. And it's more of like this getting exposure to Elon Musk as an individual, I think, uh, than, than uh, people investing just because of Tesla. Tesla's up just a little bit. Um, we'll see what earnings has to do uh, with them. IBM is down. They have earnings. And then ASML will be interesting. They do uh, the EUV. They're based in the Netherlands. They do the EUV um, chip etching. Um, but it seems like there's going to be a deceleration of chip orders. Um, so it, the delivery might get pushed out to a year. I was reading some analysts saying uh, just, you know, keep posted for that because it'll be interesting to see. Um, and these guys are probably going to ramp up quite a bit. Um, with the uh, kind of changing global developments. And then, of course, Thursday, Bank OZK, Blackstone as well, and we got Procter & Gamble and Freeport Mac Moran on Friday. And uh, I want to take a look at this. Just on a year today. Just, well, let's do it on a year. Just because I'm curious. So we'll see if this gets any kind of, like, push out whatsoever. Um, it seems like it's flirting with that $45 area. It has some low volume on that test, or excuse me, high volume on that test, rejecting it. Um, so we'll keep posted for our earnings for Freeport Mac Moran. Uh, when we get back, we'll talk a little bit about um, Apple. They're doing something crazy uh, regarding Apple payment. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Walmart and how they're pivoting away um, from their current kind of retail into some uh, other things such as uh, like health and fintech. So uh, stay tuned and we will be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to T.